something is suggesting it's becoming more populous. So when you look at a situation like U.S. Steel, this is a, a cross-border deal, and we can talk more about that. Uh, a Japanese buyer here, um, a lot of C-suites are, are concerned about doing deals like this because they're worried about the political blowback, which, case in point, Well, you're already here hearing, we're right, from Brainerd, whom US. we're going to have on the air in, in, in a short period of time, says, quote, appears to deserve serious scrutiny, speaking of this proposed deal between Nippon and, and, and U.S. Steel. Um, will they move to try and block it through CFIUS? We're going to find out. Yeah. Obviously going to ask her as well. It's interesting because... In recent history, China as a buyer has been more under scrutiny by CFIUS. Japan actually kind of going, doing a little bit of a history lesson, CFIUS was created in the 70s and kind of its powers were expanded in the 80s in response to Japan growing as an economic force and doing more deals. But lately, Japan is seen as more of an ally. And so that's kind of an interesting dynamic we're seeing here that, I mean, it is steel, which is a national treasure. With a headquarters in a swing state. Exactly. Uh, in an election year. Yep, yep. Uh, so all of those interesting complexities will, will play a role here, but uh, I think it certainly has, it will have an impact and, and ears are ringing across boardrooms, especially as it pertains to cross-border deals, which have been very modest in the last I'm, few I'm years. watching shares of Cleveland Cliffs this morning, uh, farmer Jim Labenthal's favorite stock, or certainly one of them, um, <laughs> because he talked about this deal and the premium that Nippon had offered was so significant over the August offer that Cliffs gave. Now, when the deal was announced, Cliffs was up a lot. The market saying, uh, we're glad you didn't do this, or maybe we're more glad that you didn't do it at the price that these folks were willing to do it. And they said a buyback, too. They were going to do a buyback. And Yeah, they would yeah, take savings and do a buyback. I just wonder, though, if there is real political blowback and the market gets the idea that that deal might not, not happen if it puts Cliffs and some of these others back in play. Oh, yeah. Well, they got the support of the union, which is critical, and also especially going back to the politics. And you see both sides of the aisle, by the way, opposing this deal. So it's not a, a party-specific opposition. It is really kind of everybody it feels yeah. like uh, speaking of unions it seems like it's been a year since the uaw <laughs> strike ended but there's some auto news uh, tesla today uh according to chinese news agencies launching a new mega factory for batteries in shanghai uh that would uh, begin production in q4 of 24 and then just taking stock of what's being said right now about the ev deceleration scott and what that means for legacy automakers it seems like every day Adam Jonas and Morgan Stanley has a notice to why that's good for GM and Ford and the suppliers that sell to them. Doesn't want them to. He doesn't want them to spend as, no. as much as.